Oi. Okay. <clears throat> when the drag hunt was introduced to the Army Staff College a hundred years ago, according to the official Camberley Handbook, it attracted a greatly improved type of officer. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that little has changed at Camberley, where today the brightest young officers, all in their early 30s, are trained. The present commandant of the Staff College, General Sir Frank Kitson, is a passionate drag hunter. I can't think it would attract a better sort of person. I mean, you'll select people for the Staff College on their military ability. And that must have been the case even in 1870. No one would have bothered to select them on their, on their horsemanship because any, any officer or indeed any, anyone can applying their trade in the countryside had to be able to ride a horse. There wasn't anything else to ride. These days, only a handful of the 120 British officers at Camberley ride with the drag hunt. Their quarry is not a live fox, but chemical scent dragged in advance by an officer cadet. Though their leisure pursuits are gradually changing, the central question is how good are the young officers that Britain would rely on in another war? Many people, since I started making this film, two questions they've asked. One is, are they all the same? And the other is, are they thick? That this, might, is, this is, people have actually asked me. That uh, might, of course, reflect well. the society that you're moving in. <laughs> it but, may well. um, the fact, the, But the fact is, yeah, that's, that's, that's a genuine view of a lot of people um, held particularly in certain of the more <coughs> socially insulated areas of society, such as the media, such as the city. No, I think, I think the problem uh, that we're still faced with uh, is the image that National Service created, the sort of bullshit image of the army. Um, and this is still portrayed by the media in a lot of programmes. Whenever they want a, an army officer to do a walk-on part in some amusing programme, it is always the Colonel Blimp type that's chosen to do it, who is not the sort of officer who is serving in this army. It's not to say we don't have a fair share of stupid people, but it's only a fair share. I think if you've got in you what it takes, then the army system is such that eventually the army will bring it out of you. I don't agree that, that the army is, is widely regarded as a load of buffoons. We're not a load of buffoons, not anymore. The aim of the Staff College is to teach leadership. The teachers are the brightest colonels in the army. Soldiers must know what is going on and why if they are to remain properly motivated. And I think this is absolutely vital the students are divided into discussion groups of ten, known as syndicates. They study qualities needed for command, along with the modern techniques of man management. How do we get the message out? I think it's very important they know at all times what is going on and why it's going on. I think in the final analysis, it is the commanding officer's judgment as to whether um, the soldiers in his regiment will obey without question in the final analysis. So when he says charge, they go. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The colonels play the students in the final of the croquet tournament. Yeah, they're coming, they're coming over. This is dangerous now. More than half the students went to public schools, though fewer these days come from major schools like Eton and Harrow than before. Well done. As part of their course, the students investigate long-term military problems. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all to the presentation by Syndicate Seaforn. Make a particular welcome... The team leader, Major Peter Rogers, joined his father's cavalry regiment. The aim of this study <coughs> is to examine ways of making a commission in the army a more attractive proposition in the 1980s. I'm going to ask William McNair to talk about the sort of person we're hoping to recruit and how we can improve our efforts in this field. <laughs> Personal here. Attractive young women looking for a man, trying to persuade him to take her to the altar, and then remain tied to her sink, have a good chance of success if they wash frequently and make themselves generally agreeable. 
Let us look at the military equivalent of the first two phases of this process, initial contact and commitment. Take a look at this viewpoint. You can see what a small proportion of university students even admit to considering the armed services as a career. What is even more depressing, according to the research into undergraduate attitudes to the army, is the type of person attracted. Outside the traditional home constituency of certain public schools, Oxford and Cambridge, and sons of military families, the army repels idealists and adventurers. It attracts potential bureaucrats and organization men. Any civilian can recognize an army officer socially. Nonsense. Immediately, I reckon. Nonsense. Well, I think they can. And uh, <laughs> what's the, what's, what, is the, what, what is the type of the, person? There's just something about army people together. And I'm sure that superficially you notice it here. I mean, we're all pretty much the same, give or take. It's any underneath, if you look at a different level of what <laughs> we actually, uh, um, how we actually tick as individuals on our own. But I think I'll notice a difference. I think as a group, if you see a lot of army people together, they do tend to all merge into a fairly amorphous mask, I think. I suppose one of the things, of course, with us, us sort of here is we're all exactly the same age. And um, so we all look the same like that. We all dress much the same. We all tend to um, lead fairly similar sort of lives, I think. Well, on the face of it. But of course, with a small c. Yes, conservative, yes. With a small c. I think I just that's, that's, don't agree with that. That's just completely no. wrong. Well, uh, you're the person who'd know, but I would have thought coming in here that, that we all gave the impression of being fairly. I mean, you could say there's something about chartered accountants. Oh, sure, you could, yeah. But that wasn't the well, so what? But Nothing. each one of those guys within this group of people, we, the thing we have in common is we're all in the army. Mm -hmm. Each one of us has our own likes, dislikes, and, and all the other things, and, and interests. Any officer on this course led the same life as you? I hope not, no. The, 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 fact, is, the fact is there are, there are normally two common factors if you look across a party, mm -hmm. and you can pick out a soldier because he tends to stand more erectly. He tends to, after a recent novel, actually, that's an unfortunate thing to say, um, he tends to stand straighter, I'll say. He tends to have slightly shorter hair in some cases. And he tends to have an air of command that, with the present collapse of middle class confidence, it is not, so sh it's not fashionable to have any air of command at all. But apart from that, I think we are a completely disparate bunch of people with completely different interests. Well, if I invited you to do some of the things I do in London, you would recoil in horror. Sure if you is. invited me to come so on one of your Norfolk weekends, <laughs> I would recoil in horror. But if you listen to what I said, well, I said the first impression is that similar and underneath the difference. No, I, I'm sorry, I, dis I disagree. I don't even think the same. I mean, if you, as I said, just look around this group here. If I saw, met Jonathan to party, I think he was a lot, I would think, he would probably yeah. think he was a barrister aiming for silk within a year or two. Would you? Uh, by his <laughs> you're, you're possible hippie. <laughs> How representative do you think of society the army officers who come here are? I would have said that they were thoroughly representative of society, of professional people. In fact, I wouldn't say they were very representative. I would say they were, in every respect, representative. 